Flames Talk is brought to you by Molson, made from Canada. Beaches Quality Drywall, not just our name, it's our commitment. And South Centre Fine Cars, your Calgary Porsche dealership. Let's uh, talk about the Calgary Flames grant because right now this team has a tough, tough time of trying to score goals. Next up, one of the surprising teams in the NHL. You know, they're surprising, but two years ago they were surprising. Last year they were surprising because they were brutal, but they got off to a good start. In Colorado? Yeah. Now this year, you know, what have they got? Seven wins in a row on the road? Mm -hmm. A young team like this? A lot of people didn't expect this after they got rid of Stewart last year. I thought it was a desperate trade, but obviously they know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, Calgary Flames right now, uh, well, it seems like every year, go back, 2008, oh, they can score. Uh, 2009, oh, they can score. 2010, they can't yeah. score. So this goes year after year. They become a scoring team, poor defense. This year it's a defensive team, but can't score goals. Um, so I'm going to watch the games this week and decide. Yes, they're playing a good team game. They're coming very close. They had a lot of shots on Nashville, but couldn't put the puck in the net. So is it almost coming is it almost there or is it just not going to happen that's what i want to find find out alex tongay said last week don't judge us on five games judge us on the first ten so we got three more games to go we'll judge the flames then but i'm not too certain if what we see is what they are just not good enough well when you're talking to tangate ask him when he's going to start to shoot I mean, <laughs> well, that's always been the knock against him. He's a setup yeah, guy. I know, but. And he's a setup guy on the power play, which isn't very good either. He's on the point now yeah. a lot. So, uh, yeah, they got a lot of things going on there. I think Brent Sutter has sold the fact better defense will get us somewhere. They're working on that. They're trying to be determined in implementing that on the ice. But I think it's at the expense, Mike, of yeah. being yeah. free-flowing up front. You know, Grant, when you look at the, the team's power play, for example, when the Rangers were in town, they had five opportunities. They scored in one. Uh, but they give up a shorthanded goal. And uh, so that power play is just inept right now. Right. Power play, they had a good power play at the end of last year. They, they thought that would carry over. I'm surprised it hasn't carried over. Um, so if you're an optimist, you'll say to the Flames, you're going to score some of those opportunities. You will score, then they'll be okay. But sometimes, again, like this team, when they can score goals and they can't score goals, the power play can't score right now. And if it doesn't get better, they're going to get killed because mistakes. Brent Sutter always says after games now, well, if we can cut down those mistakes, well, it's just one or two per game. But aren't they always going to happen? Every team's going to have a mistake or two. So you're right. You better score on those power play opportunities and don't let shorthanded goals bite you. Some bad breaks, obviously, with .5 seconds left against the Rangers. The bounce off the board, the guy's wide open scores. Uh, the Tim Jackman or Tom Kostopoulos goal, he was absolutely. called for goalie interference and, yeah. against Nashville, rule no goal. I think that should have been a goal. And that would have changed the whole outlook of the game. And you play different when it's a tied hockey game. So from you? what we're saying yeah. right then, fans, I guess, should be optimistic that they're playing okay, they're getting some bad breaks. Ah, I, perhaps. Perhaps. But, I mean, sooner, sooner or later you're going to have to get wins and you have to start putting the pucks in the net. The one thing that concerns me about the Flames is that last year they feasted on teams that weren't as good as them. Now, they beat the Oilers. They've lost to St. Louis right now. Nashville beat them. So teams that they were good against last year, they're struggling with right now. And even though they beat the Oilers, the Oilers are ahead of them in the standings. So if the Flames fall back too much, it didn't happen last year. And that, to me, is a concern going forward. A lot of talk about trades. Rene Bork's name keeps coming up. I know Jay Feaster, and I've loved what he did in the offseason. And I'm listening to all these different guys talk about, well, who in the hell are they going to trade without trading, you know, the top two? Well, hey, give this guy credit because he did some stuff that no one thought was possible to get them, get rid of some of these contracts and make them a little, a little bit younger. But that, you know, let the guys work. Your thoughts about giving up someone like Rene Bork? You gotta give up something to get something. Well, to, I mean, to me, are the Flames built to win right now? Jay Feaster says, yes, they are. That he thinks that what He doesn't saw, want to implode he, this. Exactly. Yeah, that's all. But I think secretly he knows he's going to have to at some point. Not, not scorched earth, you know. Yeah. Edmonton goes. Style. Yeah. I don't Edmonton think he'll do Louis, that, yes. but I think he knows he has to do things to make this team better down the road. Um, so I say everybody's tradable. And I would give this team till late November. I would say give this team a third or maybe a quarter of the season and then make bold moves. So to me, 
everybody's touchable, and I mean everybody, not just Rene Bork. Because who are you, who are you going to get for Rene Bork? Are you going to get a second round pick? Are you going to get a half decent player? Are you going to get a player that can replace Bork's ability to win now? To me, it's got to be Kiprasov and Aginla for the long term. It yeah. does. Uh -huh. If not, you're only kidding yourself for long term success, Mike. I believe that. So if so to me, Feaster, is he going to try and tweak, uh, tweak this team to win for now? Then sure, trade Rene Bork, but what are you going to get? I don't know. Surprises. I don't think any, anything significant yeah. to win for the now. I just don't see them trading uh, Jerome. I mean, especially... Well, they say they're not going to, yeah. so and, they've but, said that. Yeah. But, but come on, it's Christmas time. Things haven't gotten a whole lot better. They're below 500 now. Even if they're around 500 and they're not going to be in reach of the top eight to make the playoffs, why not say to Jerome, you're, we can trade you to Philadelphia, we can trade you to a team that is potentially a Stanley Cup contender, why wouldn't he go for it? If it means prospects, if it means something down the road to make this team better, perhaps Jerome, Jerome will want the Flamesy better because of his trade. And maybe do a Ryan Smith and we'll bring you back when you're 40. <laughs> and Kiprasov too, Mike. Yeah. I mean, why not if, if, at, if around Christmas time or something like that, to me, it's a bold move for the franchise, but I think it's something they have to do to get better. You look at what's happening between uh, Jokinen and, and Curtis Glencross. Uh, there's, a, there's a real nice chemistry going with that line. Maybe not as many goals as they'd like, but uh, Jokinen's play has really surprised me somewhat at the start of the year. Yeah, I think he's not trying to be... I, I, from, from, from what I understand, I've been told, he's not coming across the blue right round blue line now making a big sweeping move and trying to look for a nice pass yeah. he's just dumping it in yeah. so he's playing what they call the simple game I hate hearing that term simple game because it sounds boring but I guess uh, it is can I play and he allows his wingers yeah. to go and get the puck so I think he's being effective within his means he's talking about this talking about the sports psychologist have you heard that he has a sports psychologist in Miami Florida they talk on every game day and uh, uh, Jokinen's quite open about it on what he's trying to do and uh, it seems to help. He seems to be in a good place, playing a good style of game that's effective, working with Glenn Cross, and I think it's good. I good think it's for good. him. Good, good for him. To me, that's a good second line. If you had that sure. top line scoring some goals, some more yep. power play goals, that's a great second line. Then once Backlund comes back in a couple of weeks and perhaps Moss comes down to that wing, uh, that's a good second line. Grant, just that whole attitude. How many times have we seen, you know, guys uh, and their ego and, you know, say, well, I'm a, I'm a pro hockey player. I'm making X amount of dollars. I got to be doing, I've been doing things this way for a long time. I'm going to continue to do things that way. Like Henry Burris. <laughs> well, no, maybe right. Henry's going to make some changes. You never know. Uh, this kind of thing forces you to make changes. Jokinen wasn't having the, the great results that he should have had. So, Good on him. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know what? He likes living in Calgary. He has, I think he has two young girls. They go, they just love being in Calgary. So he wants to stay here. So he knows he's trying to, he's trying to, you're right, check the ego at the door and he's playing a game the coaches want. He's being effective. Makes a, what, $3 million doing that. I think that's a pretty good life. Wow. Can utility be a poster? Can utility keep you up at night dreaming? Can utility put thoughts in your head? Depends on what you mean by utility. Introducing the new Porsche Cayenne and Cayenne S Hybrid. Lighter, more agile, more efficient. More Porsche than ever.